You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of the Saints Block Party Podcast. We are recapping the Saints-Texans preseason finale game that just ended. Um, next time we'll be doing our live stream and what have you. It will be for real. Uh, opening game against Texans. Excuse me, against Titans. Excuse me. I also just wanted to give a big shout out to um, our people who won the raffle Mark and DeWitt in terms of being able to be at the game. Thank you guys for just entering the raffle. And we do, we're doing this for the Titans game, bro, the home opener. Wow. Uh, take it to see the game. Um, we're going to try to keep this recap kind of on the smaller side. I'm exhausted. Don't even really know how I'm up right now. But had a great weekend in Vegas. Saw Adele. It was dope. Drove back. <laughs> drove back. Had to take my family to the airport at like 3 a.m. because they had a 5 a.m. flight. I'm, I'm beat. But I'm here. We're talking Saints. I want to start with positives. You said it. You said it in the live stream. That Jimmy Graham touchdown. You said it was bigger than football. And regardless of how you felt about Jimmy Graham, like as a player, because he was such a polarizing player, man. It was weird. He was like he was so great, but yeah, he was so polarizing. It, it, but whether you loved him, whether you hated him. Because there was no in between them for people who Jimmy Graham. Either you loved him or you hated him. He was seen the first time. Seeing that play, the the big catch, the contested catch, then seeing the touchdown, just just like old times, box out. Oh, um, it uh, just gave me man. chills. Seeing it, Ryan, Hills, like I can't, can't play it, man. I can't. Cheeks, my cheeks is about to bust out my face, man. It was just, uh, just back to better times, you know. And, like, he was, I mean, this was, like, obviously he was on the team when I was still emotionally invested. But, like, that was, like, the last one, like, transaction that kind of was, like, man, I can't be invested in players no more. Man. You can't do right. it as a sports fan. Um, exactly. Th- those two plays aside, man, Jimmy looks fun. Like, and it's weird that this is, like, a week after all that happened. Right in Orange County with the the medical episode, the seizure, and now fast forward like a week and a day, like a week later, and he's out here catching touchdowns and making plays over defenders. Like he looks good. Like he he looks probably better than he has post Saints, bro. Like you know, Seattle. He was he was he was he was okay in Seattle before the the injury that really kind of derailed his career. Um, yeah. He went to the. He's been with the Bears. He's been with the Packers. Besides, like maybe his early Seattle days, like this is the best Jimmy's looked in a long time, man. It's so strange, bro. Like I can't really explain it. Is you try to be guarded about it because mm-hmm. like you waiting for like the other shoe to fall, and you know we thought the other shoe to fall was last week with the whole. We thought it fell, episode. man. And then he just comes back. He has like two great days at practice. Where he was just going off, and then just to see the energy he had, you know, making the I miss big it, catch. Ryan, because you like you, Ugh. Jimmy. Jimmy was like the type of player that like Michael Thomas was in terms of just that that dog and that energy. Yeah. Now they both on the scene at the same time. Bro. Oh I, man, this office got to Ryan. This offense has to cook. It has to cook. There's no excuses. I don't want to hear a single fucking excuse for anyone in the coaching staff you got Derek Carr you have a theory a good offensive line albeit they stay healthy you got AK albeit he's suspended Jamal Williams Kendra Miller Michael Thomas Chris Olave Rashid Shaheed Juwan Johnson Jimmy Graham Foster Monroe like this offense has to cook period no reason this should not be a top 10 offense there's no five. reason. No, bro. I'm, t- I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking the 10 on top the five. Ooh. Top five, Ryan. 
I'm saying this offense, this offense should. I'm not saying they're. I'm not saying they're as 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 elite as these offenses are. Offenses are, but like when you think of elite offenses in the NFL, you think of Kansas City, you think of Buffalo, <laughs> Ravens, dependent like Greg Roman, but they're, they're they're in a completely different thing. But those are like the offenses. And Kyle Shanahan, you think of them, but Kyle Shanahan's teams like offense are never really like top five offenses. They're just yeah. more of a schematic offense. So I'm saying that this offense, healthy hashtag on paper, should be along the elk of Buffalo, Kansas City. I'll probably say Miami, although Tua, uh, but it should be that good. There's no, there really is no reason, unless there's a drastic injury, a catastrophe injury, that this offense should not be able to consistently produce and put up points. We'll see, man, because. When, once you talk about like a top five offense, that's an offense that dictates to the defense. That's an offense that can bring it to a defense and have them lean the back. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. I, I still got qu- – my questions I, really are about the run game. That's a good one. Because man. I have yet to see a really good run game in the preseason. And we'll know, you know, Jamal Williams barely played, only got a few snaps out of Alvin Kamara. Um it's just like, and you know, there's been a lot of second teams, so I don't know, you know. But I just coming off last year when the running game struggled, and this year, that's the kind of thing that gives me pause. But the passing game should work, bro. Like the passing game should be. There's no reason for it should not be to. good. There's no reason it shouldn't be good. And everybody talk about like Derek Carr in the red zone. Hey, he's never been good in the red zone. Like this is gonna be the ultimate test, bro. Because if we can't, if we can't produce with these red zone weapons, bro, like it's something's wrong. Something is right. wrong. And I was, it's on Pete, man. Back to old Pete, <laughs> Pete Carmichael. That is, I, man. I, I I did the whole brought the camera in close. I'm not gonna do that again. All I'm gonna say is there. There's no excuses. There's no none. excuses, man. Um, how? How? I'm gonna ask you this: What what is the over under of the weeks of if if this offense is not producing? How long Pete keeps his job? Give me the like what week worth like a change could be made. Uh, when's the bye week? Uh, kind of early, like it's right right a little early in the season. I have to look it up. Maybe like week seven, week eight. Maybe I'd have I think, to look I think up. he has a long, he has a long road, man. Like him and Derek Carr vibing, it has to look like it has to be bad. I just put it like that. If it's really bad, I say like week ten or something like that. Ooh. Like if it's costing the the Saints games, where you see Ron Curry come in and call plays, I don't know. It's so unlike the Saints to do stuff like that. That's why it's like, yeah, that's that's very true. It's not like them at all. It's a very, like you said, mom and pop shop. They like to show loyalty. I, see, and, I just can't see it being that bad, though. Bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it can't be. It can't be. Like, well, you got a professional quarterback there. A professional, intelligent, smart quarterback who, you know, who knows what he's doing, man. So it shouldn't be hard um, to produce with these weapons, bro. Like, it should really not. shouldn't. Um, I guess we get back to the game. Like, that's the wasn't much to really take away from this game. I guess. Um, At least I not. I mean, I didn't. I didn't take a lot away offensively. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Offensively, I guess. You know, I would have liked to see more from the run game. Like I said, um, right. Uh, Kendrick Kendrick Miller. You know, he did the best he can, but I mean, bro, like he was fighting for his life out there. He man. was fighting for his life, bro. Um. I thought Jake Hayner had a, a pretty poor game. Um, I thought he was inaccurate. He it just kind of goes to show, like, yeah, this it's a rookie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got like because last week I was like, man, make him QB two. This that you kind of get reminded quick, like, this is a rookie. It's gonna take some time for him to figure it all out. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to see a little more At Perry. Um, mm-hmm. He loved some crawl, bro. Like he bro, was. Oh my god! Oh my goodness, bro! Like he was looking at on that, that one interception he threw down, um, in the end zone. 
I mean, he had his eyes on crawl locked before the ball was snapped, bro. And you could still see the safeties just run across. It's like, come on, man. Uh, but look, it was a preseason game, bro. Like, I don't know how much you want to take away from it. Um, right. What else we got? I mean, we got we got to talk about. I'm still on the I'm still on the positives. Talk about the offense and how mm. the offense should look. This defense, right? This defense. It's a lot of talent for this deep. There's a lot of potential and talent for this defense to be special. Yeah. You have like we have we have seen like this game, we we saw some flashes here and there throughout the preseason. I saw a couple of flashes at the joint practice against the Chargers for Brian uh Brissy. But this game right here, this bitch right, like we got a defensive tackle, bro. Like we like the Saints have Drafted a defensive tackle. He's still young, and I'm, I'm, it's early. That should become a difference maker, and should become a difference maker very quickly into his career. Like it is hard for offensive linemen, and I get it. Some you know backup offensive line, but he but he did this a little against you know against some starters too. His quickness for his size is unreal. Can't coach that. That Can't is <clears throat> you, God given. You built with that. Yes, yeah, God given. And it's the reason he was such a highly recruited player coming Prospect. out of high school. Mm-hmm. The reason why he was highly thought of in college. Like he has that ability, man. So as long as he's healthy and yeah. adding the repertoire to his the skill to his repertoire, the hand That's movement, it. the spin move, the you know, all the little things that come with being like a really good player. That's what he's doing right now. He's learning. He's learning. He's learning. Like watch, you can watch him. And you can see. You can see how he's learning. And man, I mean, we'll we'll so, see what the finished product is. But man, just to be able to add that to your rotation, they need it. Like they need, need it so it, bad. So someone, someone just threw out not 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 saying that he's going to become this player, but a friend of mine threw out the way he plays and the way he wins. Is very similar to that of a Chris Jones or a Jeffrey mm-hmm. Simmons. Just dudes in the middle that just cause havoc. Again, havoc. not not saying that he's going to be either of those players. Like those are right. all pros at the position. <clears throat> but it's how you win, right? It's how it's how, it's how they win. Um, speaking of the defensive line, great. Malcolm Roach this preseason has just been insanely active man like he yeah. just and i don't i don't know what to take like is it i don't know if this is like flashes of him like ascending like a step or two or this is just he looks good against backups but he's looked active and just disruptive all no i mean even pieces. da said this past week he like he's much more explosive this year like just you the way he's it. moving he says he's you know he's had a great camp like people like some people say he's like among like the top three or four players, this training camp that just had like consistently good camp, you know, just playing the run and the pass. So again, like that's one of those players they've developed over the years. We, you know, even for, as a you know as a young player, he showed flashes. He was but, he was an undrafted free agent, was he not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, from Texas. And he showed he showed flashes very early, and you know he's starting he to did. put it together. And like I said, man, when time you know time and, and experience, and you had the talent, man, like that's. That goes such a long way. It does. So to have him coming into his own, and then you have the young talent like Brice. Oh man, come on now. Bro. So I, 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 I don't know when I tweeted it. Maybe I tweeted it. Maybe it was either against the Chargers game or maybe the practice. But I said like, oh, it was it was during the Chargers practice. I said that the interior of the Saints off or defensive line is just vastly, vastly improved. And then someone got my mention like, oh, yeah, I'm not saying that I'm not right. Like, like, like I, it's the eye test, man. Like, the eye test mm-hmm. easily tells me that there, the talent at the interior is vastly better than it was last season. Which is huge um, because in March, it was the huge question mark. Like, it was like, huge. oh, 
you know, because on your mana left, and it's like, well, what are they going to do? So that's like mana shot total, that like it, yeah, right. Um, <coughs> every week, and I know we the like the first preseason game we went very hard on them. Every preseason game since Isaiah Foskey's done a little bit more, shown a, a, bit a more, little, little more, bit more. Like, so had a had a good ass sack um, in this game. And I don't like. W- will that mean that he's going to be active on game day? That I don't know. I I, I would still probably glean no, but th- at least it's an, it's an encouraging sign. And this is right. I'm going to use this example, and I'm I'm not trying to badmouth him now. When we were watching Peyton Turner early in his career, preseason especially, like it was bad, like from preseason week one to week two to week three. Like, it was, like, consistently just, like, the same. And that's, like, was something that for you and I, it was like, man, like, can you just do something, bro? Yeah. We we were hard on uh, Foskey, like, that, you know, that first week. And, like, each game since, he's shown a little bit more. Last week, he had more pressures. This this week, he actually had the sack. He finished with the sack. Um, That's what you want to see from – your first, your first round pick, your second round pick, just goes to show that you know this is those positions are positions that the Saints have like have not been good at drafting, man. Like they have not evaded them. Defensive tackle, defensive end, and that's why even for me, when it, when it's draft season, you and usually it's always a need for the Saints. For yeah, exactly, they always need a defensive yeah. tackle. And that's not the Saints. That's just the NFL, right? Everyone needs a good defensive tackle. Everyone, especially needs edge rusher. That's why I like I always get like gun shy. Like when like when I see like DTs like yeah. slot it to us, I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Like that shoulder rankers, bro. Like I was I I hated that. I hated that hated. pick. You I see hated it, see it in the mocks. Hated hated it when it happened. Like I I just hate you hated it, Brian. Good stay. Reese, like it's funny, but when Reese got drafted, like I I was I was okay. Like I I, I didn't I wasn't mad about it. So speak, stick, stick, stick with the defense. If Jalen Smith gets cut these next two days, we going I got, I, I'm going to reach out to the Saints communications person directly. See if we can get Dale on the podcast. Cause I'm going to need him <laughs> to explain it to us. Just like we're five years old of why Jalen Smith, whatever. Don't, don't, do not, you cannot use special teams. No. I, that is going to be a caveat. I say, don't say a shit about special teams if Jalen Smith doesn't make the team. I got to know why. Because he has shown, uh, it, it may be for a couple of games. Like, who knows? That athleticism we're kind of, we're kind of seeing, or he's looking like peak Jalen Smith. It may not last long, but his explosion and his burst, Bro, holy shit, man. He looks like a, you know, a high-level starting linebacker. Like, that's how he looks. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was brought in late and straight up, just sitting out there on the street, looks like a high-end starting linebacker, bro. And it, no, he's not good because there's no way. Like, there's no way. Can't, like, you I, can't, I'm bro. Sure you can't do it. They are sitting in their linebacker room. Like, the coaches are like, fuck, I can't believe we got this guy. Like, this. He can't believe this shit. Like, this is crazy. He was just sitting there, like, I'm just chilling, you know? <laughs> um, so someone, I, I want to give, I'm, if I, I'm not looking at the camera right now, I want to give, like, specific credit to the person who got my mentions and, and suggested it. Um, hold on. Sorry, this is terrible podcasting. It's what one of my specialties. But someone got my mentions and essentially said that Jalen Smith should be used like Caden Ellis was and what his role was last season. Rush the passer here and there, you know, play some snaps when he when he needs to. Sorry, it's uh at um I I don't know. I lost it. Sorry. It it's the perfect it's the perfect little package or sub package that they could find to use Jalen Smith in. Like yeah. use his talents, use his speed and make him like a contributor on the on the defense. Yeah, it they've already started. Like they were using Ed him in uh playing strong side linebacker mm. this past, you know, this past week. 
So, you know, they're already trying to find ways to get him to start, like to get him on the field. On the field, um, man. You know, Zach Bond, because Zach Bond played that spot all camp. Yep. All camp is Zach Pine. And last week, it was Jalen Smith. So, I mean, I don't need to hear any more, bro. He will be on this team. You know, how much he'll play, we'll see. But we'll see. It's all about getting the best 11 on the field, bro. So, that's it. It's up to the coaches to figure that shit out. I don't know what you got to do. Figure it out. But when he's out Speaking there, of, bro, I'll be like, I'll be looking at him like, is that is that Demario? Like that's how I be right? like, just the way he moves and everything, you know? Yes, um, it's the moves, like it's the dreads, it's it's, mm-hmm. it's all of it. Um, speaking of best eleven on the field, Alante played um some in this game, and and this is I think this is the the hard decision of what the Saints have their coaching staff of what what they do with Delonte, right? So you see on that on what that that pass that CJ Stroud threw. Beautiful pass by CJ Stroud, by the way. Holy mm-hmm. shit. CJ Stroud drops in the bucket. Alante's kind of got beat on, got beat a little bit, has the insane ability at his size to make up, catch up the speed, and not only that, time it perfectly where he causes an inter- uh, incompletion by knocking the ball out right after it gets to the receiver's hand. So that's the shit you like, oh my God. Like, yeah. corners typically don't play it that well. Like, you cannot draw up a better textbook. Yeah. But that was him on the outside. However, when they moved him on the inside to the slot, that's where his struggles come from. I'm not, not, and I, Again, I don't think it's because he can't play that position at some point. He just hasn't played it before. It's new to him. Right. Um, and so I, I just know how the Saints operate. Like, they're very, like, well, if Marshawn's healthy, like, we'll put Marshawn on the outside. We're going to put Adiba on the other side, outside because we trust him. And then we're just going to put Roby at the slot because we trust Roby to play the slot, even though Roby, even though Roby was, like, terrible fucking playing the slot last season. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I said, oh, I said it in the live stream. Like, if you're gonna play Roby at the slot, you might as well just play Alante. Like at least, like at least Alante can lumps. grow. With... Yeah, but like I read Alante take those lumps and Roby takes those lumps because I already know how it looks when Roby's gonna take those lumps, bro. And at least Alante can fucking tackle. Like Roby be out there just like <laughs> oh, chasing. Bro. That that to me is key right there. Like right, Alante is a hitter. Sometimes he's over aggressive, but he is a hitter, bro. Like, he calls with that. That's not Bradley <laughs> Roby game. That's not Bradley Roby. No. You know what I'm saying? And to be like in the slot, that's part of your game. You gotta be, you gotta be got to. run game. Get, you know what I'm saying? You play it over the middle a lot. <clears throat> but we know, we know that's not the decision they're gonna make. Like, barely will be able to play this game because he's starting at slot corner. You know what I'm saying? He, I mean, a lot of them might have two players ahead of him. They got the other guy might be ahead of him. Uh, can't remember his name. But. Ah, uh, it's just gonna be they, one of them, them decisions they, that I gotta see how they it plays out. They gotta figure it out, man. They, they gotta, gotta figure, figure it out. out. You can't just have that sitting on the sideline. You can't have a lot, Ryan. We were at the game. We were at the game last year in October. Alante held Devonte Adams to not a single catch, bro. As a rookie. Hmm. As a rookie. As a rookie. Playing the hardest position in sports. I get quarterback playing quarterbacks hard, but at least you're going forward playing like, yeah, playing, like I just I it's hard for me to understand e- even if Adebo won the position straight up, right? I'm not I, I'm not saying he didn't. Even if that's the case, it is it would be perplexing to me why Lante would just be on on the sideline. I would figure something. I'll play one safety. I don't know. Like figure something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, figure that shit out, bro. You know? Like, that's a good player you got right there. Um, Speaking of battles, we, we, and again, we're going to keep this one on the shorter side because I, I ain't got much in me tonight. But speaking of battles. Kicker battle right there? Ooh. Ooh. It's time for another season of The Palmetto Porch, an original podcast from Discover South Carolina. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I get to the heart of what makes South Carolina such a great place to visit by speaking to the locals who make it so special. Premiering December 5th, find The Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com. 
Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Man, I, I, I said a couple of episodes ago, like, I think they go with the incumbent, but, bro, I don't know no more. I don't know. I can't call it. I cannot call it. I can't call it, bro. All I, I, all I know it. is that Will Lutz on the sideline, and I I try to avoid the the arm count sports psychologists more than anyone because like i always got so like it was so annoying like i hate mm-hmm. i hate but i'm I'm gonna be a hypocrite right now and just say bro will lust on that side line looking despondent as fuck bro he was looking like upset dejected and you gotta make a choice bro because one or the other gonna get picked up in I this mean, one I, I, that think I think i think one of the others getting traded honestly i don't think it's even i mean done. like straight i straight up and that's I'm not saying like it's a Denver. I just think this the league has the league wants backup or potential like borderline starting offensive linemen. So we've already seen two trades today for like an offensive lineman. The running back that went to the Browns for like the Patriots, the like back like swing tackle, and then another offensive lineman got got traded. So we're, we're going to continue to see. Linemen, backup linemen, maybe like swing tackles get traded. So everyone wants offensive linemen. And there's a lot of teams for whatever reason, probably more than usual, like they have terrible kicking world, bro. Like the the Niners are like all their kickers are banged up and probably may not be ready to kick week one. Denver has terrible kicking woes. I don't think the Colts have a kicker on their roster right now, bro. Like you got Lutz and, and Ruby, one of them getting traded. I'm not saying you're going to get a lot for him, but one of them getting traded. Right. I don't know, bro. I don't know how you play this or not. Like, the Saints media tend to think Lutz is going to be the guy that um, that they keep. Because, you know, they've been tracking, you know, all the practices and stuff like that. But didn't, didn't Lutz, like, very recently, I don't know if it was yesterday or two days ago, like, he missed, like, two or three in practice, though? Yeah. Like, maybe that's enough. You know what I'm saying? Just... Ooh, this is a tight all, all I know is if that fucking if, if Groupie would have hit that sixty yarder, bro, this shit would have been over. Over, bro. Over <laughs> the fifty. He hit the, the fifty, 50 with me. Like that, that like, was man. me. Like I, I know, I know. Like Lutz, you know, if you want to give like him that, like the edge, like Lutz has the leg. But if Groupie can like, I don't care about the sixty. Like, how many times are you going to actually attempt a sixty yard fucking field goal in the game unless you're trying to win, yeah. bro, right? But if you can be like four, like forty five and in and accurate and maybe give me some fifty yarders here and there, bro, like to me it's a no. Like I, to me, just I'm about consistency. Lutz, the season before last, we saw some start missing some not not bunnies, but he start missing some kicks that probably for a kicker of his caliber should have been pretty manageable kicks for him to kick. Right, I know he. You want to pull up the injury thing, understandable, right? So then last year, someone said in the Discord, I think it was Dan, like the Saints kicking woes last season was very obvious during certain weeks. And then Lutz comes back and it's like, you would think he would be like, all right, he's back, he's healthy. He, he, missed, he missed some gimmies last season he too, sure bro. Like I, so for, like for me, if you want to look at look at the lens from like a defensive head coach, if I'm a defensive head coach, man, I got my kicker got to be like if I'm if I want to go in thinking, oh, my defense can shut down the opposing offense. If my offense scores twenty points, I know we can win. I gotta have a kicker that is consistent, like consistent. Right. Don't gotta think about it because once you start missing those, it throws off your whole game plan. Exactly. So, oh, this is gonna be interesting, bro. We're about to find out soon. I put it like that. We about it's, to find it's, out tomorrow or the next day. I know the kept down is Tuesday, but you know a lot of teams been pulling that cord started early. Yeah. yeah. Who is a is the Saints partner on the roster right now, Ryan? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I haven't kept checking the rest of the league. 
No, I, I don't either. Not at all. Just, I mean, I just look at the Saints pointing right now, and I'm just like, eh. You know, eh. If you could do better, do it, you know? Yes. Because th- there were times last season where, like, a good punt, a punt would have changed, like, field position and just end. Oh, yeah. Fuck, fuck. Gilligan was out there just. <laughs> and like you said, it's a defensive coach, so. Right. You know how he wants to play, bro. Like, yes. Those punts matter, you know? If, oh, you, you pin them inside their 10 and my defense gets out there, like, changes. F- at at the at the worst, it changes field position. At the, mm-hmm. at the best, if it's a turnover, there you go, right? Um, like you said, the, the cut down to fifty three is going to be very very interesting. It, it's the cutoff, I believe, it's Tuesday at one p.m. my time, so four p.m. Eastern time. Um, so I, I, I will I'll we'll apologize. Like we're we are not going to be able to get a fifty man three fifty three man roster prediction out. No, and we just. It's not gonna happen. And I've we'll, looked we'll at a couple people on... fifty. You go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was saying I've looked at a couple people fifty threes. They just about all of them the same. You know what I'm saying? Like th- this year, there's not a lot of, you know, just really crazy. Oh, who's gonna be? You know what I'm saying? It's, it might maybe two players, maybe three, that you could kind of debate over. But most of the fifty three man, like we know who they are. We know so, who like be. the. The debatable players, I would guess, is like Ellis Merriweather. Um, and once who's you figure out which kicker, kicker you, who's going to be kicker, so that's another one. I I know you said Jalen's making the team. I just, I just, I don't, I don't. This this team just you got a feeling about the. I bro, I, 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 I would and, be blown away. I would be shocked if I, he does not make be, the team. It would not be a shocking Saints thing if he didn't make the team. It would be a shocking Dennis Allen defensive coaching thing if he didn't make the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because that, that, like, them cutting Jalen Smith and then him going to, like, another team, watch it be, like, in the NFC South and him just having, like, just the, like, the revival of his career, bruh, and, like, just would haunt us for, like, at least three seasons. Oh, he goes straight to the Falcons, bro. Bro, him and Kane Ellis going to be in our ass, bro. <laughs> um, but it was it would surprise me just from the standpoint of you're a defensive head coach and you see like you see a new toy, right? Like, oh, like the kid gets like mm-hmm. like kid gets at Christmas time. Oh, like, well, what can I do with this? To me, that like, that would be that's how Dennis Allen would be with Jalen Smith seeing like his snaps, you know, in preseason. So. It was surprising me from that standpoint, not from so much the Saints standpoint, because honestly, there's not there's not anything this team can do any, anymore that would surprise me at all. Bro. It just it just wouldn't base me. But I, I will say, like the amount of linebackers, and I brought this up before, is very interesting because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of linebackers, and I know I don't know who put it up. I know Chris White Wealth put it up in in our Discord. I don't know who wrote the article of just is tracking of like typically how many players at each position the Saints keep historically yeah. these last couple of seasons. So they typically keep five five 5.5. So you want to round that down to five or you want to be generous and round that up to six, depends on who you are. Um, so that would be Demario Davis, Pete Warner, and then I mean, those are your two. And then the other three or four would be like Jalen Smith, Sewell, DeMarco Jackson, Zach Bond. Like, that's four if they were to keep six. Zach Bond wasn't dressed tonight, so I don't know if that gives you – I don't know what that means. It's, it's, and it's, easy, it's hard to look into it because a lot of people are like, well, if that person's not dressed, that means that they made the team. That doesn't necessarily mean that. No. But it could mean that he made the team at, at the special teamers, and that wouldn't surprise right. me in that lens so much. But it doesn't mean that his roster spot is necessarily safe. Um, also, we've talked about this before. Obviously, they're going to have, like – I don't know, like a mulligan or a, a open roster spot because of the AK suspension. We still don't know what's going on with Marcus May. If he's going to be suspended, if he's not, no one knows. I don't know if anyone's asking a question, but um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But all that said, when cut downs are coming in the next two days, means that they're probably going to, there's going to be some at least decent players on other teams 
who don't make that team, right? Yeah. Saints and other teams alike will like to go out, claim a, claim a player. And so the roster is going to be evolving. Um, and so just don't, don't get, I don't know, don't, don't, whatever, ha- like whatever they announce as a team on Tuesday, like don't go and thinking that that's going to be like the team. Like that can right. quickly, quickly, quickly change. Um, can I, so I know he's a backup, right? Like how does, man, Andres Pete look like, even for Pete standards, like he looked bad tonight. Like he pulled and he missed the person he was supposed to block on the pull block on the screen. Like one of the worst screen passes I've ever seen in my life, bro. Like there's like two offensive linemen in front of Kendra Miller and like Andres Pete like blocks A.T. Perry, bro. Yeah, yeah. He looked bad. And I get it, like, depth is important, but if you could get something for Andres P, I don't even care what it is, bro. You get a fifth for him, man. Thank you. Like, I'm if I'm calling Sean right now, I'm Mickey in the office. I'm calling Sean up. He's like, hey, Sean, what's up, buddy? I'm going to see you golfing later. We're going to go out to have, have dinner next time you're in town. How about this? I got Andres Pete for you and Will Lutz. If you're Mickey, what route, what draft pick, what round draft pick would you be okay with for doing that trade? Because you're giving them, you're giving Denver essentially a starting guard. However we feel about Pete, a starting guard, and probably an upgrade for whoever's that guard in Denver, which is telling in itself, and a starting kicker. Uh, maybe like, I'll go easy on him for 2024. Cause I think they're trying to hold on to them picks. So okay. I'll go easy on them and be like a fourth for 2024 and like a, another fourth for 2025. Something like that. I think that's fair. I think that's fair, man. Yeah. Cause that means for Denver, like if I'm Mickey, I'm saying, if I'm, I'm telling Sean, I said, that solves two positions on your roster. Yeah, exactly. Two. So I don't think don't think that would be a, a bad trade for for both teams, honestly. Um, yeah, we're at, we're at the thirty, approaching the forty minute mark. Anything else from this game that you want? Any player? In anything upcoming? Uh, I mean, Lucas Crawl. I thought he was interested. He caught a lot of balls. He was getting targeted a lot. Had over hundred yards. Um, I think he should make the practice squad. Um. Maybe a team that's needy at tight end could reach down for him, but I think he should make it. Um, he's just a little inconsistent, mm-hmm. but you see it. You know what I'm saying? You, you see, see it, it though. There's yeah. something there. Like you want to continue nurturing that that talent or whatever. I'd be um, interested to see. I mean, and I know he's had some good moments in preseason, and some very, very not good moments in preseason. And not not that he would ever get this opportunity, but. I'd be interested to see potentially like evaluating him when he had like a, a starting NFL court, like uh, no shot yeah. at Jameis, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Him with Derek, like how would it look? Yeah. Oh yeah. No question. No question. And you got to take that into account with all these guys, you know? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, man, not, not much. What much, we, man, we was, a, we on a zoom talk about Katrina, the, Bruh. the racist justice system, Bro, if, if Florida, you, the scientists, everything. <laughs> if you, I mean, depending if we're blowing the team out, or we getting our ass beat we, during the season, bro. Those conversations go, go come up again. Oh yeah. Um, but if you're whether you're a Patreon or not, if you just a supporter, if you're a Patreon, even if you don't have your camera on, like being in the zoo, like hearing Sherm's story. Like as a black man, it, like hearing it was not surprising in the least bit, but it was still just so like infuriating, to, like to hear it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and I think that that's something really about our community that I'm I'm, I'm proud of more than anything. Is yeah, like yeah, we can talk about football, we can talk about Saints all day long, but we can also talk about some real life shit and shit that like actually matters. That is like way beyond football. And more than anything, like the Saints brought us together in terms of the community, and that's how we do yeah. this podcast, et cetera, et cetera. But everything else that is not Saints related has like brings us even even closer. Um, and that I am 
definitely, definitely proud of in terms of what we've been able to create and cultivate. Um, we are looking forward to having a very, very, very big regular season for our business, for this podcast, for our brand. Um, like we're I, we are we're already doing similar numbers. At least last season, we're doing similar numbers of our recap episodes for regular season games, and we're doing those numbers on preseason games, right? Ooh. So I, I, I think the regular season is gonna gonna take us up another another level. Um so Wish them boys good if they good. Oh, if they good, bro. If they good and we're wrapping up a home a home game. Bro, oh, man. But them boys bad. Sell, sell them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um but it's it we're we are very excited for it. Um looking forward to it. I also just want to get, like getting back to the game just really quick before we wrap up. Um I think I maybe had some some questions about how the transition was gonna go for D'Amico Ryan's, but like I I kind of see have seen enough. Like he had that like that defense was not giving up a blade of grass in a preseason game with like third <laughs> preseason, right? like, bro. Like the boys that was, brought in, bro. That was impressive. It was, it was very, man. very, very impressive. Um, I think, you know, I had I, I liked CJ Stroud as a prospect. I did have some questions about him, but he threw mm-hmm. a couple of balls in this game where I'm just like, oh, okay. And that's the thing, okay. there's never a question about his throwing ability was no. always beautiful. But it was like, can he handle like all the nuances that go into it? But man, he's such a smooth, poised smooth. quarterback, bro. Just Yeah. So they protect as long as they protect him and all that, and we didn't see him move. Like, remember mm-hmm. there was a the question like, why doesn't he use his legs? Well, I mean, look, he just doesn't use his legs, right? But we know that's like a, something he has in his arsenal, right? When he, when he wants to do it, but he doesn't. He just doesn't need to, bro. Right? He uses his arm, you know. So he's going to be interesting quarterback to track over time. It's going to be interesting when we face them. Hmm. That's what I'm looking at a calendar. So that's about. Mm, about a month and month and some change away is when that's going to happen. But can't thank y'all enough for you know our people and our our dudes who support us in the UK and London. Got up, watched the preseason Saints football game at one a.m. That ended at four fifteen a.m. Just insane fans, insane to just be wanting to support us and our family. Um, we can't thank. All of y'all knows who who tune in, who who watch, who support, who listen, retweet, any you know, put it on your stories, anything. But we thank y'all truly, truly, truly. Um, and it comes from the bottom of our hearts. We we really, really appreciate it and we really mean it. Um, Ryan and I will be back on Tuesday. Uh obviously that's a big day. Cuts are gonna happen that day. Um I unfortunately just how the day's gonna like that cut down episode, we'd love to get the the reaction pod out sometime on Tuesday, but like I work like, pretty much all day on Tuesday and then my daughter has like acting classes. So we're not going to be able to record until Tuesday night. So it is what it is. Um, I know Ryan's done a good job of getting the episodes loaded either like late Tuesday, Tuesday night for our, for our Patreons or, you know, or what have you. So it may drop late Tuesday night, but everyone be able to listen to our reaction to it Wednesday. Cause we are going to record that on, on Tuesday night. So Thank y'all for supporting us. We will be back. We will have a lot to talk about these next couple of days. Trust me. Like I just I feel it feeling my bones. Like a lot's coming. But we'll be back. We've got you guys covered. We're going to talk about some stuff leading up to the regular season kickoff. Uh, kickoff week is two weeks, fuck, two weeks away. And then it's Titans, Lock, La, La Bullet. That's a, that's a terrible term. Like We should change that in fo- football lexicon, bro. <laughs> We out here talking about ammo and, and Pat Tillman. Hey, <laughs> Just talking about some tackling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the the game will count for real um in two weeks against the Titans and be a very, very interesting game to see how the season plays out. But thank y'all. We love y'all. Appreciate the support. With that, we're out. Peace.
Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.